Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Hero Whispers. You are here with your host, Jean Marie, Chief Supergirl and founder of Supergirls.com. That's two L, second L for love. We are here to inspire and empower young college women and alums to launch from college to life. We help them with mentoring. We help them with career coaching, networking, personal branding, whatever they need. We have incredible, inspiring women on the show, as well as these young women themselves who tell their stories. And it's so positive. It's so much fun. It's so much love. So thank you for being with us here tonight. I want to introduce my friend, Ala Greengals. She is a rock star, rock star, rock star, hailing from Russia. Oh, God. <laughs> Ala Greengals is a lead of global site optimization at SD Lauder Companies. Yes, you heard that correctly. A prestigious beauty company with a portfolio of 25 plus exceptional brands. Ala and her husband, David, live in Brooklyn, New York. Throughout her career, Ala practiced front-end development and user experience design for many media and news brands such as People, Time, Sports Illustrated, Golf, InStyle, Economics, American Kennel Club, and startups such as Rigor, to name just a few, where she always had the mindset of a web performance champion for all digital products she touched. Hailing from Southeast Ukraine, Ala holds a master's degree in mathematics from Odessa State University, as well as user experience certifications from the Nielsen Norman Group in NYU. Welcome to the show, girlfriend. Gosh, thank you so much. What a glorious introduction. Let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get started. First of all, this headshot is so beautiful. You look divine, like a beauty queen in this headshot. I'm just, I'm just saying, just letting you know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, nobody can see it on the radio, but <laughs> they can, they can envision it that you look like a Russian queen. All right. <laughs> so, so people have this, um, you know, this idea that Russians drink a lot of vodka. Would you say that's true? Not for me, though. I mean, I, I could drink vodka. I can drink a bottle, probably not getting drunk, but this is not my favorite activity. <laughs> oh, my God. I always, I, I always think that I need to, uh, to be clear-minded in the morning. So, <laughs> Especially now with this big job. First of all, congrats on the big job. Oh, my God, guys. Thank you. Yes, global site optimization. That is a huge, huge, huge uh, career move that Ala just made recently, and you're a total queen Thank for this. You. Yes, you're welcome. You're well, very well deserved. She has come and spoken in my classes at NYU, and they love her. They, she has so much knowledge. But how did you decide to go this direction? How did you get this amazing gift? So um, I, I, I didn't look for a job because I worked in an in amazing star, startup company called Brigger, and I was very happy. But I was approached uh, uh, by S.A. Loader uh, on LinkedIn. So um, at that point, I understood, OK, having your LinkedIn uh, profile being sharp and do your due diligence on LinkedIn is very, very important if you're looking for a job. So if you ask me um, how I got a job, somebody reached out to me. And what's important uh, is not only when you look for a job, but when people look for you and find you. But when they did find you, make sure that on LinkedIn, you have your nice headshot, you create eye-catching headlines, you craft your interesting story. In the first paragraph, you use even visual media, be creative, customize your URL, you know, have your first and last name in your URL and start making connections with the right people and ask recommendations. But probably my best advice would be uh, on LinkedIn. If you not sure, if you not aware of this tool, uh, find or Google LinkedIn Pro Finder, 
Profinder and uh, select all of your options, and you'll be surprised how many options you'll get um, to apply for a job. That yeah. is great advice. Thank you for sharing that with our yeah. girls. Fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, they reached out to you, but you had to crush the you had to crush the interviews. I know you're very modest, but I mean, you know, it's not an easy gig to score. I mean, it's a huge gig. So I, I'm so I'm super impressed and just so proud of you. So that's so amazing. But, but let me tell you a little bit about this job itself. So. First of all, it's uh, 360 websites. Um, it's 25 websites, like top portfolio, but there are a lot, a lot of different websites. When I decided to move into SA Loader, um, I was impressed by her story. And uh, since uh, uh, we have probably some girls listening to it, I highly recommend to get this book that SA wrote herself, it's author, uh, it's, um, it's her biography, it's called Essay, The Success Story. And uh, she's absolutely amazing entrepreneur um, from last century. Um, and uh, she's worth of, in, you know, researching and reading about. She was not just a successful retailer, uh, but she was visionary entrepreneur and role model for many, and um, while uh, cosmetics retailer exists for centuries, but uh, she completely break through with innovations, and she took the cosmetics industry by storm, by changing the way fragrances were sold and transformed. Because in the in the in, in the middle of last century, in 1950s, most women reserve, you know, they only use fragrance for special occasions. And they would wait for their husbands to give them perfume for their birthdays or anniversaries. But this is something that SA completely changed. She created an environment where she enabled women to buy their own perfume, to buy their own products. And uh, I'd like to quickly highlight on uh, some rules, uh, commandments that SA Laura came up with, which you may find pretty useful. And you can find it in her book. So some of them that I really like, um, I'm going to quickly read. When, you, when you're angry, don't ever put anything in writing. <laughs> when you, <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> right. You, you, get more bees, uh, you, you get more bees with honey. Keep an eye on, on the competition. Divide and rule. My favorite, which I... I'm still trying to um, to accomplish it, but my favorite is learn to say no. Oh, that's such a hard one. Yeah. yeah. I'm, so, I'm so behind of this one, you have no idea. Oh, um, my God. Right. It's trust boundaries. Yeah, yep, boundaries. Exactly. Right. Trust your instincts. Acknowledge your mistakes. Write things down and break down barriers. So I listed 10, but you can find all of them in Essay's book. That's great for sharing. Uh, this is why the class, the students always love Alla so much, because she brings all this crazy knowledge from wherever her walks of life, and she shares it. Like it's like ingrained right. in, her, in her mind. Your mind is so powerful, Alla. It really is. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you navigated your career through this, technology and digital world and it was like I mean it's interesting that you're working for Lauder now because Lauder has a, a ton of females right in the industry the cosmetics industry yeah. but in general you were, you were mostly in a male dominated kind of fields right oh yeah being in technology you are yeah <laughs> yeah so right. I, I how did you what like what advice can you give our girls about you know, being successful in that kind of a culture. Yeah, that's a good one. And it's challenging. It's challenging, too. So um, without, without being too philosophical, I'm going to give a couple of maybe more practical advice that come from my own experience. So um, 
you 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 have to start by owning more of who you are and what you have to offer in order to reclaim your own power. So first of all, try to show your value. If you're waiting for somebody else to recognize the value that you bring, you may, you know, you may well be waiting your whole life <laughs> until you recognize your own worth. Um, in terms of being heard, like let your voice be heard, right? People say um, a lot of studies show that we women are probably much less likely than men to speak up in meetings because it, and, and when, when they do speak up, when we speak up, we often kind of sound apologetic repeatedly like i'm sorry that i'm late i'm sorry that i missed this i'm sorry that i'm that maybe i didn't answer this question and uh, they allow themselves to be interrupted but if you don't believe you have anything worth saying how can you expect others to have confidence in you so if you work if you worry about working in male dominant um, environment recognize the value of your opinion and believe that what you have to share is worth listening to. If you doubt your own worth, everybody else will. Um, speaking, as, as you can see, I speak with a pretty harsh Russian accent, but it doesn't matter. I, I may speak with an accent, but I don't think with an, with an accent. So whatever you do, <laughs> speak with confidence, right? If your communication style seems a bit weak, then you need to practice, practice, practice to be, you know, to become more assertive. That doesn't mean that you have to be rude or hostile or, you know, um, or constantly apologize on, on the other hand. But what you really want to do is to know what you're saying and say it with strength. That requires a lot of preparation, but speak with confidence. Um, Another thing, with, like when you work in, in technology with a lot of guys around, um, stop saying things like um, you guys. Because sometimes when people say you guys, don't forget that the room might have a few women as well. So uh, try to find some wording when, when you don't say Hey, so you guys know, always acknowledge the presence of a woman in a room. But if you ever have a conflict, conflict with the guy, you know, it could be anybody from your boss to your peer. Instead of engaging in this conflict or even avoiding it, learn how to communicate by acknowledging it and asking yourself, okay, how do I move past this? So... Don't make or don't allow personal attacks. Keep it professional. But I would say uh, count how many times a day you apologize and completely cross it out. Stop being apologetic. Find, find other words or other rules how to explain yourself. And uh, don't be like one of the most important things, and I did it a few times during my career, and it worked really well. Don't be afraid to ask for a raise or, or promotion. When you, when you work, uh, you know, like you say, in, a, uh, in an environment where you think that guys make more or all of your bosses are male, it, it doesn't matter really. If you, when you're ready for a raise or promotion, chances are you'll be asking your, boy, you know, your boss who is a guy. And it may be a little bit intimidating. Don't be shy. Make your expectations clear and state it sim in simple terms, you know, why your expectations should be met. And most bosses aren't going to 